Section 2.3 Interactive Assignment Objective 2. The accompanying frequency polygon represents the number of a country's residents below 100 years of age. We're going to complete parts A through F. Now we're going to click the icon here to view the frequency polygon. Now when you click on that you can use one of these two to either you know make it a little bit bigger or if you need to make it smaller. And if you choose this option it's going to open up an entire new screen where you can see the entire graph. Okay now the first question asks us to find out what is the class width and how many classes are represented in the graph. So a frequency polygon is a graph that uses points connected by line segments to represent the frequencies for the classes. Now it is constructed by plotting a point above each class midpoint on a horizontal axis at a height equal to the frequency of the class. After the points for each class are plotted, the line segments are drawn connecting consecutive points. So two additional line segments are drawn connecting each end of the graph with the horizontal axis. The class width is the difference between consecutive lower class limits. In a frequency polygon, recall that a point is plotted above each class midpoint. Thus, the class width can also be defined as the difference between consecutive class midpoints. Find the difference between midpoints of two consecutive classes in the graph. To determine the number of classes, recall that two additional line segments are drawn connecting each end of the graph with the horizontal axis. Thus, the first and last points on the graph do not represent class frequencies. We're going to count the number of classes, that is, the number of points with non-zero y coordinates. So, the first thing I want to identify is the following, okay? Again, to determine the number of classes, it says, recall that two additional line segments are drawn connecting each end of the graph of the horizontal axis. And it's saying here that the first and the last points in the graph do not represent class frequencies. So that means that this point here at negative 5 and 105 do not represent class frequencies. Now, we can say the following, that these points here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Those are the class midpoints. So therefore, we're going to go ahead and then just label that as class midpoints. So these are the class midpoints. Okay. Now, the best thing to answer all the questions in this question is I would generate a class list so that you can do that and then you can answer all your questions a lot easier. Now recall that each point plotted up here is a class midpoint so 5 represents the first class midpoint, 15 represents the second class midpoint and so on. So if we wanted to find the class width we just need to take the difference between the two class midpoints. So if we take the value of let's say the midpoint of 35 and then subtract the midpoint of 25 well that's going to give us a class width of 10. Okay so if that gives us a class width of 10 then we can go ahead and then continue making our classes. So before we do that remember that this represents the midpoints. Okay so what I'm going to do is if the class width is 10 then that means that 5 is in the middle. That means that there's a point here and then there's a point there. Okay? So that means that this point here is going to then represent the value of 5 minus 5. Therefore, this is going to give us a value of 0. Okay? Now, again, we're going to put another point in between here. Okay? Because remember, 15 is a midpoint. And then between these two points, 25 is in the middle. Same thing with 35 is in the midpoint. 
45 is in midpoint, 55 is in midpoint, 65 is in midpoint, 75 is in midpoint, 85 is in midpoint, and 95 is in midpoint. Okay, now since we know now that we're given the value of the class midpoints, we know that the first class lower limit is going to be zero. Okay, so what does that mean? That means that the next lower class limit is going to be 10. Because if we add 10 using the class width here, that means this is going to give us 10. Okay, the next lower limit is going to be 20. The next lower limit is going to be 30, and then 40, and then 50, 60, 70, 80, and then 90. So again, that represents the lower class limits. Now, how do we find the upper class limit? Well, recall that the upper class limit is taking the next lower class limit and subtracting 1. So if we take 10 and subtract 1, then that's going to give us 9. So therefore, this is going to represent the upper class limit. Okay. Now, if we add 10 to the 9, then that's going to give us 19 for the next upper class limit. And then this is 29, and this is 39. This is 49, this is 59, this is 69, this is 79, this is 89, and then this is 99. So if you do this at the beginning of this problem, you're already going to know what the classes are and how many there are. So let's count how many classes that we have. Well, again, we counted the midpoints, which gave us 10, and that should tell us that we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So therefore, we have 10 for the class width and 10 number of classes. So let's go ahead and put that in there. So we know that this is 10, and then there are 10 classes, okay? Now the next question says, what is the midpoint of the first class, and what are the lower and upper limits of the first class, assuming that the lower and upper limits, class limits, are whole numbers? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead, and I'm just going to go ahead and copy this class here so I can use this in the next question okay if you have it on your paper then you can use that on your paper so let's go ahead and do that here so here is our class okay and now we want to find out what is the midpoint of the first class well if we take a look at the midpoint of the first class we can see that there is that value so the midpoint of the first class is here. So the midpoint is going to be 5. So the midpoint that we have is 5 because these are our midpoints. So therefore, we're going to say that 5 represents the midpoint of the first class okay and now it says to find the lower class limit of the first class and the upper class limit of the first class so recall that from our previous step we know that 0 represented the lower limit and then 9 represented the upper class limit and that's given right here from our classes that we designed. So therefore, the lower limit of the first class is 0, and the upper limit of the first class is going to be 9. So let's go ahead and put that in there. So again, the midpoint of the first class is 5. And we said that the lower limit of the first class is 0, and the upper limit of the first class we said was 9. And therefore, there is our result. Okay, now in part C it says, what is the midpoint of the last class, 
and what are the lower and upper limits of the last class? Assume that the lower and upper class limits are whole numbers. So again, I'm going to go ahead and copy our table. Okay, so let me go ahead and do that. So there is our frequency classes. So what we want to do now is we want to find the midpoint of the last class. Well, remember that the, la the midpoints of the classes were these points in the middle. And remember that we do not include the endpoints. Okay? And as you can see here, we know that the midpoint of the last class is 95. So what does that tell us? Well, if we take a look at this last class, we can see that the lower limit is 90. And we can see that the upper limit is 99 with a midpoint of 95. So the midpoint of the last class is 95. The lower class limit of the last class is 90. And the upper class limit of the last class is 99. So let's go ahead and put that in our here. So we know that the midpoint is 95 of the last class. The lower limit of the last class was 90. And the upper limit of the last class is 99. And there is our result. Okay, now it says, which age group has the highest population? So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So to determine the age group with the highest population, we want to find the highest point in the graph and determine of which class it is a midpoint. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and then get, again copy our classes here. Okay, so where is the highest point on the graph? Well, if you notice here that the highest point on the graph is here. Okay, which shows us that we have a midpoint at 45, which means that our lower class limit is going to be 40, and our upper class limit is going to be 49. So it looks like it's going to be this class here, which is 40 to 49. So let's go ahead and answer that question. So 40 to 49 represents our group age group that has the highest population. Okay, now we're going to take a look at which age group has the lowest population. So again, let's cop copy this uh, classes. Okay, now we want to answer our question, which age group has the lowest population? Okay, remember that the first and last points in a graph do not represent class frequencies. But to determine the age group with the lowest, okay, so let me go ahead and change that to the lowest population. We want to find the lowest point in the graph and determine of which class it is a midpoint. So which one has the lowest point? So just like we did up here, we want to be able to find the lowest point. The lowest point is at 95, okay, which tells us that the midpoint there is 95. And so what we want to do is recall what would be the lower limit of that midpoint. Well, the lower limit is 90, according to our classes, and then the upper limit is 99. So therefore, it's going to be the age group from 90 to 99. So let's go ahead and answer our question. We're going to go from 90 to 99, and therefore there is our result. And now it says in part F, which age group has 46 million? So let's go ahead and do that. Now, which age group has, we already did which part E, let's look at part F. It says, which age group has 46 million? So what we want to do is we want to first determine whether 46 million corresponds to the X or the Y coordinate of a point on the frequency polygon. So we can see that 
46 million is a frequency and it corresponds to the y coordinate because if you look over here this is a frequency and then 46 is going to be in between that 44 and 48 so therefore we can see that 46 that's 46 million okay so that means that here we have a y coordinate of 46. Now we need to determine which point on the frequency polygon has the value of 46 for a y coordinate. Well, what is the x coordinate of the point? Well, the x coordinate, okay, is the value down here. So therefore, the x coordinate is going to be 45. So that means that that point lies in between which class? Well, if we take a look at that, we will see that the lower limit of that midpoint is 40 and the upper limit is 49. So therefore, 46 million is going to fall within this class between 40 and 49. So let's go ahead and put that in here. So which age group has 46 million? We're going to say 40 to 49. And then there is our result.